y'all it's angel from angel mills brand strategy here we are more than halfway through the business and wellness series here on the she is angel mills youtube channel and of course me being me i finally come to the conclusion that perhaps i should do a little intro video for these sessions moving forward so if this is your first time meeting me i am angel again of angel mills brand strategy and i specialize in helping emerging entrepreneurs grow authentic relationships with their customers. Feel free to click the link below to learn more about me and my services. I started the business and wellness series because I was thinking a lot about how I can transition my business to being more than just a marketing agency. Entrepreneurship, it's a lifestyle, not just an employment choice. So it's so important that we are mentally, spiritually, and physically well. And so that's what the Business and Wellness Series is all about. We have had dozens of subject matter experts come to this platform and talk to us about so many different things, business, mental wellness, physical wellness, and spiritual wellness. If you are enjoying this content, please let me know in the comments what you think, what sorts of topics you want to talk about moving forward. I would encourage you, if you have not already, to go ahead and check out the rest of my videos for the Business and Wellness series on my channel, She is Angel Mills. I do have a playlist, so you can check them all out there. You can also click the link in my description box to register for our upcoming live sessions. So I'm so glad that you are here, that you are motivated, that you are interested in taking your life to the next level. That's always a little cliche saying that we hear, but I know I'm all about that. So again, I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome, and I look forward to talking to you soon. It's Angel from Angel Mills Brand Strategy here. We are more than halfway through the business and wellness series here on the She Is Angel Mills YouTube channel. And of course, me being me, I finally come to the conclusion that perhaps I should do a little intro video for these sessions moving forward. If this is your first time meeting me, I am Angel, again, of Angel Mills Brand Strategy. And I specialize in helping emerging entrepreneurs grow authentic relationships with their customers customers. Feel free to click the link below to learn more about me and my services. I started the business and wellness series because I was thinking a lot about how I can transition my business to being more than just a marketing agency. Entrepreneurship, it's a lifestyle, not just an employment choice. So it's so important that we are mentally, spiritually, and physically well. And so that's what the Business and Wellness Series is all about. We have had dozens of subject matter experts come to this platform and talk to us about so many different things, business, mental wellness, physical wellness, and spiritual wellness. If you are enjoying this content, please let me know in the comments what you think, what sorts of topics you want to talk about moving forward. I would encourage you, if you have not already, to go ahead and check out the rest of my videos for the Business and Wellness series on my channel, She is Angel Mills. I do have a playlist, so you can check them all out there. You can also click the link in my description box to register for our upcoming live sessions. So I'm so glad that you are here, that you are motivated, that you are interested in taking your life to the next level. That's always a little cliche saying that we hear, but I know I'm all about that. So again, I'm so happy to have you here. Welcome, and I look forward to talking to you soon.
Hey, everybody. Happy Sunday. I hope that you are, are enjoying your holiday season. I know that I feel like these words are kind of blocking my head. OK, there we go. Um, I know a lot of us are enjoying the holiday season right now. We are spending some much needed time with our family and our friends and we're getting some time to relax. So that is so important right now for us to just recharge and just Woosa from this crazy year we've had. We are just a few days from the new year. And I don't know about you, but I'm really pumped up and excited for what the new year has to offer. So I am so glad you all are able to join us tonight. Some of you came here because you just joined the She Live Club. So I want to welcome all my She Live Clubbers to the mix. Thank you so much. It is great to have you here. And um, it's awesome to be able to just send out my first message to the She Live Club. So, so glad to have you. I will talk a little bit later. I realized in the description, I did not include the information for the She Live Club. So um, I'm going to, um, while we have Chandra presenting, which I'm going to bring her on in a few moments, I am going to go ahead and update the description. And then I'll tell you a little bit later about the She Live Club. And I'll tell you what it is and I'll tell you how to join and I'll include the information in the description so that you are able to do so. So, um, you guys, if you just watched the video, I played it a couple of times because I know some people were just joining in, but um, you got a little bit of a sneak peek of learning what the business and wellness series is. Some of you have joined us for several events. So we're so, so happy to have you joining us. This series is a true labor of love. And some of you may be wondering if we're going to continue this series into the new year. And good news, we are. So we won't be doing it as frequently. So we've actually been having these programs approximately three times a month. We've been having some amazing guest speakers join us for insightful dialogue and free masterclasses, which has been amazing. So we have several free masterclasses on the business and wellness series playlist if you check it out on my channel. So definitely check that out and see what our previous classes have been, um, what our previous discussions have been. Everything that we're talking about is business and wellness. So if you're into that, then you are in the right place. Also, um, so just stay tuned. If you join the She Live Club, which I'll talk about a little bit later, you'll be able to get a text message each time we go live. So whether we're going live on YouTube, Clubhouse, or Instagram, you'll be able to join us from there. So I want to take a little bit of a moment to set the stage, as they say, I'm using Clubhouse lingo over here, for what we're going to talk about tonight. So tonight we're talking about the top seven mistakes entrepreneurs make. So a lot of you are joining in, you are new entrepreneurs, you're just coming into this entrepreneurship game, and y'all, it's crazy over here, but it's super rewarding. So kudos to you for even taking that first leap. But a lot of you are joining live and watching on the replay. You're in those beginning phases and you're trying to figure all of this business and branding and marketing stuff out. And I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. And I know that is so challenging. So tonight we're really going to dive into some of those top mistakes that entrepreneurs make and how you can make sure that you are avoiding them. I also want to let you know my heat is coming on, on and off while we're speaking. So you may hear a little bit of a hum in the background, but hopefully that doesn't affect our audio. So I'm going to go ahead and read our speaker bio, and then I'm going to invite her to come on. So tonight we have Chandra Livingston with us. Chandra is a certified axiogenics self-leadership coach who helps clients enhance their ideas of what's possible toward the goal of increasing their influence and effectiveness. Chandra has over 20 years of experience as a certified public accountant and corporate finance professional who recently received an Unsung Hero Award as a result of her expert oversight of a $4.3 million hurricane disaster relief fund. 
Sandra collaborated with a team of dedicated student counselors to manage the efficient distribution of aid to more than 800 families. Her effervescent personality and poised professionalism were cited as being key to the success of this long-term relief effort. She is a holistic business advisor, change agent, and organizational management strategist who specializes in improving financial oper operations. She is highly skilled. She is a highly skilled strategic planner and has a reputation for being a professional down to earth communicator known for effectively building rapport, fostering creative brainstorming sessions, driving change and achieving results. She is certified in zero accounting software and experienced with QuickBooks Online and Dynamics GP. Sandra has years of experience as an accounting manager with processing the transaction, transaction cycle, month end close, bank reconciliations, crafting of accounting procedures, preparation of year end audit schedules, internal team building and executive coaching. She has served for many years as the Houston Volunteer Accounting Director for the College Fund UNCF's annual telethon, where she led 80 plus volunteers to tally donations during the annual night of the show telecast. Chandra is a keynote speaker for the Arbonne Leadership Multicultural Academy, a member of the Houston chapter of CPAs, a lifetime associate member of Jack and Jill of America, and also serves on the Deaconess Board at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. So we are so happy to have Chandra with us. She has a wealth of experience in business, finance, and coaching. So um, I'm going to invite her on one moment and add her in. Hey, Chandra, thank you so hey. much for joining us tonight. Hello, I'm so excited to be here. It is just such a pleasure. You know, I was born in Atlanta, so anything that's coming from that yes, Georgia clay, Southern, I'm excited. <laughs> absolutely. Lovely, lovely. And so we're happy that you're speaking. We have a lot of AC aliens or Metro AC aliens in the building, but we also all have right. people all over the place. So we just can shout out some folks who have joined us. We have Lillian here from Decatur, Georgia, and she All has right. put her social media, sending them for you, her social media stuff in the comments. So go ahead and check her out. We have oh, Jerry okay. here from Atlanta. Welcome, Jerry. And we have Cindy here from Los Angeles. So welcome, All Cindy. Right. Thank you so much for joining us. So for those who are on, I know a lot of people look at this while they're driving or doing laundry or just getting ready for the week. Some of us are going back to work tomorrow before the new year. So if you're just listening, then welcome. We, we're happy that you're here. If you're able to introduce yourself in the comments, please do, because we love to connect with you and know who's joining us. Absolutely. Awesome. Yes. So Chandra, why don't you, I know we went through your bio and you talked about so many of the amazing things that you've done so far. So before we get started with the actual class portion, I did want to talk to you a little bit about kind of your journey to getting to where you are now with your coaching and the types of support that you specifically provide for entrepreneurs at this time. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Angel Mills. Yes, mm -hmm. my journey has been one, pretty much a traditional one, you know, going the education route, getting a degree in accounting, certified accounting and all the certificates. But what I noticed when I got in the corporate arena, there was sort of this anxiousness in my heart. I was seeing so much information. It's like being a fly on the wall where you see all this incredible information from board meetings to serving on committees and not seeing anyone who looked like me in the room. So I started to wonder, how can I be a bridge? How can I serve as a conduit to make sure that what I'm taking in in my career gets to live in my community? And so I began to search out volunteer opportunities and that's when I stumbled upon the college fund, UNCF. And at the time, the person who was running muscular dystrophy telethon was also running the UNCF. And they were looking for a person of color to actually take that over from an accounting standpoint. Of course, college has always been fostered in my family. My dad was first time to go to college and my mother has her master's. So I jumped at the opportunity. And to my surprise, it was the turning point. It was like um, 
my superhero moment. I was yes. a, a, a friendly accountant by day and a superhero <laughs> volunteer by night. And there's something that magical when you put a student mm -hmm. in front of a camera and say, you know, let's put five minutes on the clock and let's see if we can send John to college. And to see that kid's face turn, just pure joy as the numbers told up. And in five or 10 minutes, we've raised enough money to put that person through school. And that moment just catalyzed for me how important it is to be on the other side of the transaction where you're not just counting numbers and beans and transactions in a historical fashion, but can you be upfront to really have impact where transaction really makes a real impact and on people's lives? So I, for years, wanted so badly to, you know, do just that. But then I'm saying, how can I leave the six figure salary, right? <laughs> <laughs> to do these things. So I had an opportunity to work, uh, contract work, and then I was at a school system. And then one day a very strange thing happened. It began to rain and rain and rain. And then that rain had a name called Harvey. And it, as uh -huh. you know, was one of the most historic storms of the century. And I did have some experience with uh, Hurricane Ike when it hit Houston. And uh, the wonderful manager that I was working for, a brilliant CFO, uh, Millicent Chancellor, had the kindness to say, Chandra, I want you to see if you can take this over for me. And at that moment, I shifted from the audit work to doing the work of helping people make choices of how they're gonna live and get through a disaster. And there's nothing more fulfilling. And I saw that look again, the look that was on the young man's face when he saw in five or 10 minutes, his life change. That's what happens when you hand someone five or $10,000 and says, we will rebuild your house. We will make sure your kids go to school. It was life changing. So a short term contract that was supposed to be two or three months ended up being a full year. And in that mm -hmm. year, after giving out $4.3 million, my heart was set on fire. Like the Grinch, it grew two times yeah. too big. Mm -hmm. And then that's what set me on the course of seeking ways where I could monetize my passion of really leading and being a champion for change, even in the face of disaster. And what really rang true is the power of making a decision. And so mm -hmm. that's what led me to seek out what could I, you know, every time you go into a room, there's two things people want to know why you're there and why is it relevant for us to listen to you. So I knew I had to search out some sort of way to get more knowledge in this. So it's this not coming from the passion that I have inside, but it's really coming from a place of sound uh, science. And then mm -hmm. I found the axiogenics and long fancy word, but all it is is this marriage of neuroscience of how your brain functions. Hmm. and the value system we have as people, what you value. And not so much um, the values of honesty and integrity. Those are great, but this is like more so values in that what you, you prioritize. Uh, mm. Do you put family first or is it your business now because you're single and you're trying to make that career track and leveraging the questioning power of your brain to shift the way you move through this world. So. Um, it's Your Time to Flourish is my company. We're in the business of helping working teams, individuals, and their families be vibrant, self-aware decision makers so that they can thrive from the inside out. So as you're making money, you're making a difference, and you're also managing the bottom line in a way that creates a holistic uh, cultural experience for your company and doing good at the same time. So mm -hmm. that's kind of what led me here. It's just this story of me coming from behind the curtain. You've seen the Wizard of Oz says, who is that man? <laughs> <laughs> so now I get paid to do the thing I'm most passionate about, which is helping people shift and bring change in their lives. Nice. That is beautiful. And I also appreciate you explaining exactly what axiogenics is, because a lot of people I know prior to meeting you, I had not heard of it before. So I appreciate you sharing what that type of coaching is. And I think a lot of times I know probably primarily the folks, primarily the folks who are watching are probably in the black community. And a lot of times we don't have access to that kind of information about different types of coaching or support. So it's really great to have you here. And that's kind of part of what the 
the purpose of this series is, is giving us that exposure into different elements of business and wellness, things that maybe we hadn't heard of or we're not familiar with that um, we can utilize as tools to be better in, in our, in our, as business people, but also to just be better in general in our lives as humans. So absolutely. You know, the, yes. whole, the whole human experience is about humans being right. Not mm -hmm. humans doing. And the being right. comes from our thinking and how we kind of show up in a moment. So axiology mm -hmm. was actually started about 75 years ago from a research from Professor Charles Hartman. And he was in Germany during the time of Hitler's reign. And he noticed mm -hmm. that they started to make a difference between people of different backgrounds. And he wondered, why is it? Why is it that someone's life is less valued than ours? So he started to do his research. And then years later, this became what we are known as axiology. And the Hartman Institute is now the crown jewel of one mm -hmm. of many shops that focus on people really honing in on what is important to them at this moment. So this is a real science, exciting science. And the mm -hmm. reason that I was excited to be a part of it is because, as you said, a lot of these tools are available, but not to communities where we may navigate it where we may navigate rather. So I wanted to be sure that as I transition my business and strike out on this uh, sort of this journey of marrying my passion with something that I can monetize to get those rare precious jewels of information that I can bring back to my community and to all communities to say, here is something that you need to know about. And with this being the information age, all of us have phones information is a commodity that's so available. You can actually get on your cell phone and, you know, look up how to do brain surgery, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not a lack of information. It's more so knowing where the information is and making it relevant to what you're experiencing in your life right now. And so with our coaching methodology, we teach you through a very scientifically sound assessment to really look at what is it that's making you make the decisions you're making now. So it's not a personality test. It's not a behavior test. It's not who you are, but mm -hmm. it's where you are. And the, the beautiful part about it, you can use that as insight to actually remove blind spots to get you where you want to be. And so branding is so important that, you know, how you show up in the world is what branding is all about, right? And I know you're the expert here. So yeah. I'm excited to, that we met um, and I'm actually going to be actually calling you later to get some of your services because what I've seen so far is amazing. And you're from the ATL. So, you know, Georgia, Peach, <laughs> what can I say? We're going to make it happen. <laughs> Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. And so I do want to shout out a few more people before we get into the good stuff. So I also want to let you know, if you like this kind of content, go ahead and like and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. So you'll also be notified when new videos are coming up, as well as when I'm live here. And then I also want to shout a few more people out. Feel free to share that link also with anyone you know. You can share the link with them now because we haven't gotten into the class yes, part yet. So go yes. ahead and share the link with them. There is not too late for them to join. And um, we have Fatima here. Hey, Fatima from Atlanta, Georgia. She says hey. she's glad to be here and looking forward to learning more about this topic. Awesome. awesome, awesome, awesome. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into the presentation. Let me... Switch in here. So I'm going to go ahead, Chandra, and uh, and let me remove this banner as well for okay. you. So I'm going to go ahead and mute myself and it'll just be you. And then if you need me, I'll be right here. So just let me know if you need me at any point. Absolutely. Well, you know, the key here is common mistakes. And I want you to know this is the no fault zone. We're not here to harass you or to, you know, take you to the woodshed for making mistakes. Actually, I will, on the other hand, champion the fact that mistake making is the sort of the, the way you learn best, right? You can learn one of two ways, the formal education, or you can kind of go out there on your own. So as we progress through, I want you to know that you're going to be in the right place, that you're going to know some things that you can use right away. And I'm going to try to advance my slides here. It seems to be kind of stuck. Let's see what's going on. But the next thing is I want you to do is take out a pencil and a piece of paper because I want you to have a ton of notes that you can process through and make sure 
that you're keeping aware of where we are and most important where you are on this. Um, can you move the slides on your side, Angel? It's not moving for me for some reason. You may have some movement with your click, like clicking on the slide with your mouse. That usually will yeah. move it. Okay, let's see. I no, still, I'm not able to move them on my end. Or did you try the left or right button or literally clicking on the slide with your mouse should move it to the next slide? we can get this going here so now this is a prime example of what happens <laughs> to entrepreneurs right you have to be cat-like and when things happen and they will happen you have to just be able to continue to go so as we wait for uh powerpoint to kindly the powerpoint guys please be in our favor i want you to do three things number one get something to write with and make sure that you can actually see what's going on and then i want you to start to think back on some things that have happened in your life that you thought were a mistake and actually turned into be the one of the greatest lessons because you're going to find out that let's see here if i can get this going here that actually mistakes are designed for us to fail forward and as long as you can learn something from it no harm no foul you can make it happen so I'm going to continue to press every button I have. Did you try clicking on it with the, your mouse? Yeah, I'm clicking, I'm pressing, and it's just going big and little, but it's not progressing. Well, if you want to just minimize it and maybe just don't have it fill the whole screen, you should just be able to click on each slide yourself. If you just exit the full screen. Yes. I've exited the full screen and now I am clicking. So what do you see on, do you see the, all of the slides in the PowerPoint? Yeah, and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's, it's, it's reduced, but not seeing it's, I'm clicking. Are you I'm clicking, clicking on the PowerPoint? Because you shared your PowerPoint. Um, are you in PowerPoint right now? Or are you, op is it open somewhere else? Okay, did it move? Okay, it moved, yeah. <laughs> okay getting back in it. So you're in the right place if you can see how you can have a mistake happen anytime, right? So just know it's nothing to be ashamed about. So you're in the right place if you want to establish a framework to build on, right? So no matter where you are in your entrepreneurial journey, or it could be that you don't even have a business, but with everything going on in the current environment, you may see a need to maybe think about something else you can do to, to sort of shore up your income stream. Also, you're here in the right place if you don't want to focus on road bumps. A lot of times we are our own worst enemies. We beat ourselves up. We have negative self-talk. We replay that video over and over again of the PowerPoint not working. Listen, I've had presentations. I was in software sales where I actually had a PC blow up in smoke, a projector blew up in the, in the, in the meeting and we just hovered around PC and we did sell that particular software. So, there's nothing to be uh, excited about when things happen. Also, you're in the right place if you wanna see what's possible, what is actually doable when you think about all the stressors that are going on right now. And I'll tell you, in history has shown us that in times of disruption are when the greatest creations are made. Now, this may not be for you, and I want you to be honest, if you're comfortable figuring it out on your own, there are people that just like to do that. They're creatives and that's all good. You get to be who you are. So if you're the type that you don't want to kind of have a pre laid out blueprint, you kind of like want to wing it. And if that's the resources you have to kind of recover you from those mistakes, that's okay. Um, if that is the case, please take notes for someone else this might be useful for. Also, if you're not willing to pivot or shift, because anytime you make a misstep, a mistake, a mishap, the universe is telling you, let's rethink, let's retool, let's see how we can do that better. Also, if you're afraid of failing, because I can tell you, failure is the world's quickest, quick start lesson to doing it better the next time. So anytime that you can think about it in that way, 
it will serve you. Now, here's my promise today. I'm going to be as authentically as humanly possible when I have some insight that I want to give you from all those places I've been, whether it's been on a national telethon or having the opportunity to be uh, in a boardroom or what would happen when you're at the bank for the first time. I'm going to share that information right now. We're going to get through a number of slides. We're going to respect your time, but then we're going to also give you some quick takeaways so that you have information that you can share real life, real time. It's going to help you right now to pivot. The next thing I wanted to share is that in return, I'm going to ask you three things. Number one, close your computer. If you're multitasking, and I know it's hard because... 2020 has been the year of multitasking, homeschooling, working from home, viewing church online, getting your laundry, shopping, everything. But I want to ask that you take this moment just to focus on you. And if anybody that you're dwelling with now, kind of let them know, you know, I'm going to just take a few moments for me. If you could just not disturb me, you know, hopefully. And then if you would, Put that mobile phone on silent, but don't put it away because at the end, I'm going to show you how to leverage this smart device to do some very super worthy and super powerful things to move your business along. So about me, as I said, I'm a certified oxygen and self-leadership coach, certified public accountant with tons of years of experience uh, handling multi-million dollar budgets, corporate banks, uh, charitable foundation, the school system, you name it. But when I had that life-changing experience, I realized that I wanted to focus my efforts on getting information to people who normally don't have access to this information. Those entrepreneurs striking out on their own, going for the goal, and maybe not having access to information that they can use to make decisions in an informed way. So basically, I began with the mantra is, is that you can't control the scene around you, but you can control your gaze. I'm going to say that again. There's so much that has happened in 2020. There's so many distractions and things that can take up your focus. You can't control that, but you can control your gaze. So the mantra is you are 100% in charge of the choices you make. All that needs to happen is shift your thinking to change your life. So I wanted to have a platform that will allow me to take all this expertise and knowledge and experience and all of the blessings that I've been able to gain professionally and personally in my volunteer life and share that with you today so that I can boldly speak life into you. But I want you to know it hadn't always been like that. Before I had that sort of aha transitional moment, my desire was to kind of do this for a long time, but I was afraid of making mistakes. I mean, you think about it, if you have a reputation of a certified public accountant and being an accounting manager and helping people transactionally get through uh, the business cycle, the last thing you want to do is strike out on your own and flop. <laughs> and because of that fear, I just played it safe, just did what I knew. But volunteer to do the things that were passion to me. But something strange happened. I decided to do a, a photo shoot. And for this one, I took my daughters. And you can see there's Mia there with the puff. And then there's my oldest daughter, Alicia, there. And in the middle of the shoot, as we were changing, I said, Mom, listen, you've got a couple of headshots and all this. Do something fun. Do something you've never done before. I'm like, why? <laughs> all we need is headshots. But I said, you know what, let's change. So I had some extra clothes there and we changed and we took this shot that you see with all of our faces. And I had seen this shot probably years ago in Ebony. And I said, you know, one day when my daughter's heads are almost the same size as mine, I want to take this shot. I posted online and there was so much reaction. We had people commenting from all over the world about this photo of these three women that are in relationship and family. And it let me see, you know, you're thinking that you're projecting an image, but really what the world is craving from you is just to be your whole authentic self, the messiness of it, the sloppiness of it, and bring that to the business table with you. Well, 
So from that point on, I began to take pictures of a various variety and I began to get noticed, began to get press to speak at conferences, on workshops, online for groups out of Chicago and Houston and San Antonio, even Las Vegas. And then this is a picture of me in one of those. And you can see it's quite a different, uh, struck, striking difference between the two poses. And I saw that as I began to make decisions that really showed what I valued, I really began to have more of an impact. And that's what I want to share with you today. So get ready to take notes because I will tell you that being on both sides of the table, being on the side where you're in the back office processing transactions and doing those things, as well as being in the front office where you're marketing and being the expert working with people like uh, Angel and branding yourself. I can tell you that no matter what community, male, female, young, old, any sort of background, there's seven common mistakes that are often made. And I want to share with you how you can quickly pivot from that so that you can fail forward, learn very quickly that this was a way for you to just to enhance the speed at which you get better. Also, I'm going to share some superhero moves. So as you look at these mistakes, you may be thinking, oh, my God, I've made four of the <laughs> Of the seven, this is a uh, this is a wipeout for me. Not the case. I'm going to show with you and let you leverage some of my experience, some superhuman moves that I've seen other women make. I've been blessed to work with some of the most amazing, accomplished, well healed, compassionate, amazing women in the corporate arena, in the nonprofit space, in the uh, faith based space that you could ever imagine. And I'm gonna share some of the things that I've seen them do and they've taught me, as well as we're gonna have a lively Q&A session. If you know Angel, nothing's held back. We're gonna talk about ways you can pivot from this moment. So if you're ready to go, let's start with number one. So the number one most common mistake most people make is not being clear about what you want to create. Now I can tell you, as an axiogenics coach, one of the first things we start about is just seeing what do you want to see happen? I want you to think about that. It's not about making money. There are lots of things you can do to make money or pay off bills. But what is it you want to see happen? If you reverse engineer the future and say 20 years from now, what are you thanking yourself for that you did today? So you never want to start a venture by thinking about how I can make the most money or how I can get on social media to the fastest. You're in business about being clear about one thing. What do you want to create? Let me give you an example. You may be thinking, well, I just need to make money. I got laid off. I was working at a restaurant because of social distancing and I just didn't need to make money. Well, you're making money for what? to pay bills. You're taking paying the bills so for what? So you can have more free time. Free time for what? For my family. Free time with your family, what would happen? I would spend more time, you know, nourishing them and reading and read. And why do you want to read to them? Because I want them to be lifelong learners. And why is lifelong learning important to you? Because I want them to always know who they are, whose they are, and be able to fully be present. And I think when they journey through story and they can read, it's just going to make them a better person. And I can see that for my children. That's, that's what you use to base business off of. You want to read first engineer what you can see happen. And as you know, you have to see it for it to become so. And once you see that thing, then you reverse engineer and say, what business venture can I create that's in alignment with who I am? The worst thing you want to do is let money lead the way. If you are, for example, allergic to pets, do you really want to put 10000 in on a mobile pet uh, grooming franchise? <laughs> it's more than money. It's know-how and having a passion for the thing that's solving the problem. So this is the one most common thing. There's a misalignment. There are people who, you know, have owners in liquor stores and they don't drink or people who have a uh, 
they work in a gym and but they never work out. They just come in, cut the lights on and get the mats ready. You have to really be in this thing. It's really spiritual work. You're solving a problem for people in a way that adds value. And the only way you can really do that is to really see in the future how this current endeavor is not only making you show up better, but you're solving problems in a way where people come back to you over and over to solve those problems. So you have to be clear about what you want to create and then make your decision based on what craft, what endeavor you're going to do and to the level of greatness. You know, if you work with your hands, you're a laborer. If you work with your hands and your mind, you're a craftsman. But when you work with your hands, your mind and your heart, then you're an artist. And being in business is all about artistry. So number one, just be clear on what you wanna create, what lifestyle you want, and then making sure the business endeavor, the passion, the money, your resources going toward the thing that makes your life better and looks better for others. So that's number one. Be clear about that. Now, number two is going it alone. I don't know what it is about entrepreneurship where we set sail in this vast sea of commerce by ourselves. And let me tell you, that is a mistake you never want to happen. Now, you want to always, what I call, find your tribe. And these are people who support you. Now, we've often heard it said, you know, it takes a village. And, and that's true. But I want you to write this down. It takes a village to find your tribe. And let's think about these people. These are people who have your back. They support you. They will invest in you. They will collaborate with you. And they will answer questions for you and make sure you don't go into something uninformed. And the best way to find your tribe is within the village, within those communities that you frequent, whether it's a workspace or a community club that you're in, maybe a sorority, fraternity, your church, um, the local chamber of commerce. You're already in these circles of community and network. This is a great place to ask people, who do you know that can support this business venture that I want to make? Now, there are about five key players. This is going to be your posse when you think about your tribe. Number one, you want to make sure you have a banker. You have to have a banker, not just a bank account, a banker, someone who knows you when you walk through the door, they say your name, they know the business you're carrying on and they know about your passion. Okay. Make sure you have a banker. It's going to be very important as you go out fast forward in the future, and then you're going to scale it into bigger deals. You'll need a line of credit. You'll need loans, maybe. You'll need someone, a joint venture partner. You'll need someone to allocate for you to those underwriters who make the decision as for that loan. So you want to have that. You also want to have an accountant, someone to keep up with those transactions and to do it in the right way. I can't tell you how many times I've seen business deals fail because of entrepreneurs who started off with the passion, doing the work, doing the do, not documenting anything. And keep in mind, a, a bank account is a way where you pass transactions between commerce transactions, between the store and yourself and between your doctor and yourself. But a bank account is not an accounting system. So you need to figure out how you can help someone or get someone to help you with that. You also need to have an attorney, someone that can legally navigate you through the perils and the pleasures of doing business in a way that protects you and manages your risk. Add that to your tribe. You also want to find someone that's going to help you with insurance. Someone that can, hopefully an insurance broker. An insurance broker is someone that's not tied to a particular brand of insurance. Rather, they are independent and they can hear what you need and recommend the insurance that's unique for your company. You're also going to need someone that's going to help you with sales. You can imagine the gap that you will have if you have the greatest, you know, cobbler pie or the greatest way of servicing or the greatest way to style someone's hair, but there's no one that can speak for you to met 
let the marketplace know what you're able to do. And there have been many sales people that have not been hired at the appropriate time and that and the company actually torpedoed because they built a premise, they got going, they advertised, but no one really driving the branding and the problem solving and making the case and the messaging of that we're here, we're here to work for you, we can add value. So it's not just doing the do, but someone that can speak for you how well you do the do. And the last person, but certainly not the least, you need a consultant or a coach, someone that can help you navigate through the decision-making process of uses of funds and how best to time certain transactions. There are certain things that you can scale too fast, getting orders in that you can't fulfill, people get um, tired of waiting, and then you lose that. And then there's nothing worse than trying to correct the momentum of bad press. So as you go out and on this entrepreneurial, don't go it alone. Find people who can advocate for you, who can speak for you, that will loan you their, their expertise, their money, their time, but also get a banker, an accountant, an attorney, someone in insurance, and get a coach. Now, number three kind of goes hand in hand with number two, because the third most common mistake is people fail to count the cost. They have no idea of their numbers. And if you've seen any episode of Shark Tank, this is one of the Pivotal, 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 pivot, see, I can't talk. This is one of the key things that you are asked when you're asking them to take their hard earned money and to invest in you. And you could have something that, you know, I've seen amazing deals and we've all seen them, but when that key player either didn't know their numbers or know how to get them comfortable with the sales, past sales, current sales in the quarter and future. They just say, you know what, I'm out. So these are the five numbers that you need to know. You need to know your startup expenses. These are the costs that get you up and running. Um, it could be if you're going to be an LLC, your, your cost of business formation, all the fees that you have to pay downtown with the IRS, with the government, with there may be fees within your industry that are required. Also, Having a place to establish where business transactions will occur. Are you going to be brick and mortar? Are you going to be online? Do you need a website? Do you need an Instagram page? Are you going to get Angel to help you with it? She has a feed. So everybody that's, that's going to be in your corner, you have to get those costs, you know, kind of amassed so that you're ready to start business and not run out of fuel. And that's what liquidity is, fuel for your business's fire. Don't run out of that. It, it, you know, uh, before you've had a chance to gain momentum to get your business up and running. Also, the break-even point. This is the point at which there's a minimum cost to do business, and you make just enough money to meet the minimum. That's breaking even. You're not losing money. You're not making money. But here's the goal. We have to get past the break-even point because guess what? Break-even is zero, and you were at zero before you started business. So, you want to make sure that you know what those numbers are so that you can make sure that you have as a target at the beginning of the month what you need to hit to cover rent, to cover lights, to cover occupancy costs, which is everything it costs you to occupy a space, the rent, the insurance, uh, the lights, uh, maybe the security guard, everything that it costs you to occupy a digital space, the website, you know, the email all the costs of all the apps. You've got to have that and you've got to have it in, a, in advance at least 18 months out because it needs to be that base of operating to give you the leverage to have enough time to get people's attention and say, hey, do business with me. You've got to be able to have that construct in place so they know where you are and what problems you can solve for them. Contingency costs are key. These are costs of things that you didn't expect. It's not in the budget. A prime example was all of the social distancing equipment that businesses had to add in as a result of what's going on now. So the plastic shield and the mask and the adding the, the janitorial service, not just at night, but during the day, all of that had to be added on. 
Also, investor inquiries. If you scale to the such that now you have people investing in you, you have to be able to know what's your landed cost. That means the cost as it lands or as it ships and gets to the destination. What's your wholesale? What's your resale? What's your cost to? What's the cost of concept? All these numbers you need to know. And of course, all of this can be gotten on any Google or YouTube is the like the mecca of information, right? You not only get to find out, but someone who shows you how to do it. But the one number that I find most often people don't know is their health numbers. I can't tell you one of the most common mistakes is people failing to count the numbers of their own health, their cholesterol, their weight, their 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 stress level. You've got to be able to also keep your eyes on the prize of you and making sure you keep yourself healthy and strong. So all these numbers are really important. And one of the things that we stress as a holistic company is that you got to see the entire picture, not only the bottom line, but how you're able to manage your own health, to have the stamina, grow the business and not wreck your own health in the, as you're doing that. Now, the fourth, this is so common that I'm going to take some time here is using a cost plus pricing model. What this is, is when people think, okay, I am selling a cake. Cake costs me $5 to make. Um, delivery costs or whatever. Okay, so that runs me about $25. I want to double my money. I'm going to charge $45 for this. That's a cost plus model. It's the cost of something to make it. And then you put on top of that a profit margin of some kind. But I want you to think about value. There's a value that you bring to the table. Maybe your cake is like Cake Boss and you can make cakes that, in the shape of, you know, very elaborate things. There's no client wish that you can't fulfill. That has value. And maybe you have a way of talking to brides that when they're ordering their dream cake, you can assure them that on their wedding day, they're going to have the most gorgeous, tasty, most moist cake they've ever had. That has value. And a lot of people underprice thinking, I'm just getting started. Let me bargain basement my prices. And no one will value you until you value yourself. And your value is not just based on the commodity itself. It's based on, as you see in the graphic, excellence and quality. And one of the things we do with the assessment we have in Axiogenics is actually help you measure not only what you value, but how that is showing up in your life and how you could have blind spots when you're not valuing things you should or the things that you do value, you're overvaluing them. And so this particular aha is so key. You have to make sure that you price your goods and services in a way that gets you above break even, where you can flourish and thrive so that you can be vibrant and stay in business in a way that's healthy for you and makes the living that is re-engineered of what we saw in the future, right? So that you can have the time with the family so that they can read and be lifelong learners. You can't do that if you're not having the engine of commerce make enough money. So don't undervalue yourself. Price a good price and then deliver the service. Now, I want to just stop here and talk about perception. Because a lot of what's going on now, we're online, we're not meeting face to face. And I want you to know, you've often heard perception is reality, but actually perception is your belief about what is real. Think about that. Let's look at this picture for an example. What do you see? Let me tell you what I see. I see a beautiful young woman, casually dressed, beautiful hairstyle, smiling to the side. Now, that's my perception, but think about the person that she's on the PC with. They may be thinking why she has her side of her face to me. Why is it that she has stopped focusing on this meeting? And as you know, with homeschooling, in line with working at home, in line with, with worshiping at home, in line with, with doing everything at home, there are times when people that we do life with disrupt the meetings that we're having, right? So I want you to be aware that 
of your body language. And if there's a meeting that you have, take command of the space because once you make a perception in someone's mind, it's very hard for them to backtrack. The mind in axiogenics, we learned that from neuroscience, your brain is a meaning making, value judging, your decision making machine. It sees something and it makes it so. So you don't want someone to think that as you look to your child, for instance, and you're trying to lovingly look at your child and say, what do you need, honey? Okay, I'll be right there. Let me get off this meeting. That's the, the child is being served. Your customer on the, main, on the other hand says, she's ignoring me. Why is her hands covering her face? So just be mindful of perception. You never get a second chance to make a good first impression. Also, just know as far as color perception. There are people that will just have a, a thought some kind of way, as my <laughs> kids sometimes say, because of what you're wearing. See these stripes? Stripes tend to start to get busy on screen. So you want to make sure you have solids in. And this is where Angel shines. She can not only tell you how you come across from what you offer, your branding message, but even your imagery and the, the perception that you give from a from a um, visual perspective, it's all in point. So just be aware, just be mindful. People are looking and you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. Now, let's talk about common mistake number five. And I can tell you this is accountant, this is big time. No paper trail. I can tell you, you wanna have the mindset to document everything. You have a best friend that's gonna help you with business, you don't need a contract. You've been knowing them since third grade. Document everything. I will tell you there have been so many times that relationships have been spoiled because one person has a perception of what their role is. That's not what's in the perception of the other thing. Then business happens. The friendship gets in the middle and it all implodes. Document everything. Be your own internal auditor so that you can communicate through this document what your expectations are, what the results and how that will be measured, right? And then what the next steps are and what that looks like, whether it's a job descriptions or policies and procedures or how you're gonna handle customers, document everything, especially when it comes to your accounting and your transactional work. Right now, there are deals being made where people are saying, okay, you just started a business, that's okay. Let's just start off with, three years of your personal financial statements. Wait, well, first, most people don't have a financial statements for themselves. They have a bank account. They have a list of bills. They don't have financial statements. But I can tell you in Harvey, there were lots of nonprofits, especially when it came to professional organizations, that if you could show them your financial statements and your transactions or your status before the storm and after, it made a big difference. If not, show us your tax return. But if you haven't filed in the last two years, so there was no basis on which to determine the level of uh, damage or uh, disruption you'd had. So I can tell you, document everything, have the accounting systems, have all of those professionals, your banker, your attorney, your accountant, your insurance person, your coach, they're gonna help you put together a system and I want you to remember that word system, S-Y-S-T-E-M. A system is anything that saves you stress, time, energy, and money. System, think about that. Saves you stress, time, energy, and money system. So anytime you're presenting a procedure and it, the result of it doesn't do one of those things, it may not be a system. So. It needs to be an accounting system, software system. It needs to be a communication system. And it has to be something that saves you time, stress, time, energy, and money. Money, Then it's going to serve you in that way. Anything else is just probably money poorly spent. So think about that. The next thing is not being diversified. Think about the people that all they did was maybe worked in a restaurant and they were very good at it. I've known people that have had several restaurants, but when you dig down in the receipts, 
their biggest percentage of the ticket was not the food, it was liquor. Now what happens, what's happening now, people don't Uber eat liquor. They just go to the store and get their liquor. So if the main thing you're in business for, a restaurant, and if food is not the main thing that people come there for, the value of that is decreased. And then when you're not diversified enough, that restaurant closes or you're laid off or whatever the case may be, all your eggs in one basket. And as this illustration shows, they easily crack that way. So you always want to have a mixed level of income sources, different platforms. So if you do business, do business maybe online. Another platform is that there's something you do in person. Also different customer base. Maybe if there's one business that serves men, then there's another one that serves family and maybe another one that's B2B. Also different investment strategies. I can tell you there's been times that I've hit dry spots in between my consulting, but my investments that I learned how to do when I was an investment officer, all the gains I've been living on those, drawing those down and deploying those in my business. But also level of need. Think about the person who makes masks right now or people who are in charge of cleaning buildings. They're doing pretty good. Think about on the other hand, persons that aren't doing so well, and if you think about the unemployment where they say it's 10% unemployment, which is very high, it could be even higher than that. But think about the converse of that. That means 90% of people are working. So you need to figure out how can you navigate through this pivot and find yourself on the other side of that transaction, not on the side where whatever your good or service or your role or your job was not essential and figure out how you can pivot to that side. So you've got to diversify in all these areas and have a mixed source of income. Every chair on Shark Tank, all those people in those chairs have on average 20 sources of income. Seven is a sweet spot. And speaking of seven, this is the seven most common <laughs> one. And you know, it, it's, it's, it's so funny because we don't think about that one day you won't be in business, that you'll either have to do something else, retire, and you have to have an exit strategy. When you start a business, know how you're going to end that business, right? And there are four ways that a business ends. It's you either sell it, you dissolve it, you solve everything, you have to sell everything because you got to pay a bill off, you pass it down to the kids, or you turn it over to the IRS or some other entity that you owe money to and the only way to, to satisfy that debt is to give them your business. So begin with the end in mind. Now as we go over these uh, recap, just know that these are common. So this is no time to, you know, beat yourself up or to think, you know, I tried that. I, it's just not for me. If you know that your passion is to do a thing, you may be thinking with so much going on with social distancing and the economy and all these uncertainties, this may not be the time. This is the best time. The most amazing uh, business uh, entities, organizations have come out of disruption. When people are so uh, put in, in straits and they think of ways, that's when the human brain begins to figure out how can I turn this around. So as you look at these common mistakes, I want you to kind of take a snapshot of this, look at this, and just know that of these seven, you may have done four, three, one or two, but if you've done any of them, I wanna now give you some superpower moves that you can do to kind of, kind of you know, expedite your recovery and move very strongly into 2021. Now, the first thing I want you to do is case studies. Case studies are the way you can supercharge your information. There is no industry, no business type, no business form, sole proprietorship, LLC, corporation, you name it. There is a case study on it. Get three examples, one in your industry, one in your region or your part of the world. So if, if I'm here in Texas, I need to get something in the southwest part of the United States in my industry of business consulting. And then give an example from your network. Who else do you know 
that does this well, that you can kind of bounce the research that you're finding off of. This is a superhero move. Learn from other mistakes so that you can catapult your way through. Another thing to do is to volunteer. Remember I told you how I was a volunteer account director for almost 12 years uh, for the UNCL. Never paid, never got a dime, but it changed my life. Not only that, I got in the room with CEOs and producers, TV producers and anchors, people till this day who know my name on a first name basis and I know theirs. I didn't go into it with that intention, but that's the result. So if you volunteer, do volunteer about things that you care about, but it's the most exponentially fast way to get into a room of people that you never would get into that room either any other way. So if there's an organization that's the ideal example of what you want to run your business on, see what community endeavors that they do and volunteer with there and see and volunteer with those organizations. See who you meet in the room, get their names, grow your network, grow your influence through volunteering. And the last superpower move is to read more than you write. Now, if you think about it, we write every day. We're texting, we're on Facebook, but reading is the way where you can take your mind places. There's three areas I want you to think about. One is the, the expansion of the mind, actually the things that you know. And the only way to go in places where you don't get to travel in person is through a book. Reading books that actually teach you how to show up in a better, more powerful way. Another way to read in a way that shifts your life and shifts the momentum of your success is to read, to learn about skills, how to be a better listener, how to be a better person at SAP, how to be a better lawyer, how to actually deliver your craft in a better way. And also learn about people. That last graphic stands for civilizations and people in power. Learn about those things as well. Listen to people of all ages. Back when I was doing that photo shoot, this is one of the pictures that my daughters told me to type, to take. Now, this is not what I came in the photo shoot to do or pay, but this is the picture that was used on the flyer that got you here. This picture has to garner so much chatter in my world anyway, because they're thinking, how did she get up that high? And I remember my daughters right now saying, mom, just, just jump. And just, I said, well, why do I even need this picture? Mom, sometimes you have to show people that you just have joy anyway. It's not all about the business. And so when you want to really expedite past errors and, and mistakes, this will be your vibranium. Remember in uh, Black Panther, when they had vibranium, that was a superhero power. That's why you can do that. You can expedite your way through errors, through mistakes by reading your way. And I'm going to show with you with what I have been able to discover is allowing you to now put together your next best move. So I want you to pull out your phone because I'm going to share something with you that I've put together. I've had many conversations with my clients, with other fellow coaches, people that are trying to help people pivot and shift to the next. So I want to let you know that this is the best time of ever to make a fresh start. If you've ever thought about starting a business or starting that side hustle and making it your main, whatever, let me show you how to make your next best move. I am because of the, the conversation I've made with, with I've had with Angel. I want to share with you in a way that's very powerful. So I've created what I call the fresh start primer. You think about paint on a wall. And anytime you want something that lasts, you have to put on a base coat, the primer, if you will. This is a package that's gonna allow you to get a fresh start on your thinking about what you want to do to create more money, to create more purpose, to create more power, to create more life for yourself. And keep in mind that money is not the only currency, right? So you get to start off by having your VQ profile. This is the axiogenics assessment that lets you see of 36 attributes, 18 of which of how you feel about yourself and 18 of which of how you feel about the world and let you get an introductory report of about your three 
most potent ways of thinking. Two that don't serve you and one that does. And what that's going to do is going to lay the groundwork for a conversation that we will have for about an hour where you get to think about what is it that you want to create? And the beautiful part about the brain, when you show up in a way that's powerful, that serves the end game of who you really want to be, what you want to see happen, it benefits your work and your health and your kids and your family, everything, all boats buoy up together. So this is going to give you that assessment. It only takes you about 20, 20 minutes to complete. Very easy. And then after that, it's going to analysis, do an analysis, and then echo back a report to you within four days or so of your appointment with me that will give you a chance to look at it, go through a goal-setting framework, leveraging the axiogenics methodology of what you value, and it will walk you through that very easily, and then set up a coaching call with me based on you responding to some questions of what does success look like and how does it show up in your family and what's hindering you so that the time that we have together is very impactful. Now, this is normally a $297 value, but I, the way that I've been doing is valuing things so I can have as many people that can engage with this. So for $97, you can get all of this huge discount off. You can go to this registration link, or if you can take your phone and scan that QR code, it'll take you right to the place where you can engage. Let me just say as I wrap up is that this, this moment is your time to show up in a very powerful way. You've got two choices. You can sit on the sidelines, hoping the cavalry comes and sends the PPP loan and all those things. That's all that's well and fine. But being agency over yourself is all about you really thinking, even if the cavalry doesn't come, I'm forming a posse. I'm going to gather my tribe. I'm going to figure out what it is that I'm passionate about, what I want to create and see. And I'm going to leverage people like Angel and Chandra and others that I can rally around and help me make this happen. And with that, this primer will give you that tool that you can use to catapult you to set this tone for the next year. And anytime you want to have a tool to make a shift in your life. So with that, we're going to take questions. Hope you've been making uh, some notes and we can get started on what you, your concerns are. So Angel, it's back to you. can't hear you. Oh, yeah. I'm muted. I'm unmuted now. <laughs> I I do that, that everybody does that. <laughs> yes. Oh, my gosh. I just switched our screens. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. So um, I have all the information here for Chandra at below. So if you would like to book your coaching session with her, you are definitely able to do that using the link below. And go ahead and start asking those questions that you may have from the presentation. And Chandra, I just want to let you know that presentation was so, oh. so good. <laughs> like I already have some thoughts of what I'm going to talk to you afterward. Like, okay, we need to do some follow-up conversation about these these seven items yes. on Clubhouse and Instagram because I think it would be great to bring it mm -hmm. to that community who's over there and um, give them an opportunity to ask questions. Because I feel like those things were so spot one. And I'm going to mm. be honest, some of those things I'm not doing. So that also shows to me, okay, these are some areas that I need to work on to make sure I'm strong. In, in business. So I really appreciate like those were completely spot on and certain things mm -hmm. I do do. And I do recognize the value of doing them. So kind of like with you, when you kind of came up with these seven things that you noticed, like entrepreneurs are struggling with typically when they're first starting out, like how did you ascertain like these were That's a very good question. You know, the issues. numbers never lie. So being an accountant, it's like being a medical doctor, right? You can, when you go into an engagement, the first thing we need is a paper trail. Show me your checkbook. Show me your bank statements. See me your financial statements. And when you don't have those things or things are missing or when you see bounce checks or things not being reconciled or vendors being paid late 
or loan covenants not being met or with company corporations when people are unaware of their role, you have murmuring. All of these are like the telltale signs of systems not being in place, right? So you can think of any time that you want to really know uh, how well you're doing, you have to have some sort of construction of transactions in commerce. So it's real important that the paper trail is established. I can't tell you, so many people have brought me in, you know, two or three years down the road when now they want to do example, for example, business with the city. So if you do business with the city, there's a certification process, they need financials, they need bank statements. And these people have been rocking and rolling, but they just do their phone or just do word of mouth or mixing transactions, business and personal within that same bank account. So now, even though you have the viability to do business with the city, the country, the government, the world even, you can't document your success. And it, for people, it's a red flag that they have a very hard time putting their arms around and saying, you know, that's okay. You didn't take, you didn't make good notes about how well you spent your money. So I don't mind you having my money. Right. It just never happens. So that's the thing, the, the paper trail and me being in the accounting world, you kind of get to see, you know, your, the financial statements naked, if you will. So <laughs> there's a lot of similarities, but that's the first telltale sign. The other thing is you don't have organic repeat business. If you're mm -hmm. really doing what you're supposed to be doing, your customers should be singing your praises from the rafters. Oh, my God. Have you ever tasted this yeah. cake? It's amazing. Or the way she does my hair or the way he defended me in court, even though, you know, they had all of this, you know, these risk assessments that I fell. The good faith wasn't done with this contract. And my lawyer was able to get that scene for the jury. So when you're doing the do, your customers speak for you. And so right. that that organic word of mouth, you know, prior to the internet, prior to social media, people just shaking hands and just sharing with people, you need to go see Angel. She is the best. You need to go see Chandra. Hey, have you checked out Millicent? Have you checked out what, you know, Garland is doing? Mm -hmm. These are the folks that will be of anybody. Word of mouth, um, advocacy for you. Is a thing mm -hmm. that if you don't see that, it's, a, it's something saying that you're not really cherishing mm -hmm. and, and honing in that relationship, which can multiply right. you without you spending one advertising dollar. Just people just singing your praises as they go about their life. Absolutely. And I think that it's thinking about, too, how can you add certain touches or go above and beyond? Because even from a marketing standpoint, you know, a lot of times people hop into all these very complex marketing strategies and things like that. But it's like the best way to market is to do right by the people that you're currently working Absolutely. with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And letting them know and and, and all, really like a lot of times you don't have to let them know. They'll naturally just start telling people, mm -hmm. you know, they'll naturally start to do that. So you but you can also offer incentives like something that I've been offering for advising a lot of my clients to do who depend a lot upon referrals is thinking about how can you cultivate that program or some sort of mm -hmm. program so you're able to get even more referrals in. Absolutely. Remember when I said how to find your tribe, a good place to find your tribe is in those volunteer opportunities, right? Because you're yes. in a space that where there are like-minded people, right? And so if you want to find your banker, find your banker that, you know, wants to volunteer for the things you care about as well, the earth, the environment, you know, kids, homelessness, and find that sort of camaraderie around a a common passion. And then by the way, here's my business card. These mm -hmm. people will be in your corner when it's time for you to go up for the loan. Because a lot of people want to scale up, do business with the government, do business with the city. And with mm -hmm. the next administration, we're already seeing the handwriting on the wall with the different programs going to roll off through infrastructure, through education, right. through the environment, through health concerns and health initiatives. Uh, things are going to kind of erase student loans that they're going to need a lot of players on the field. And if you can't scale up where when you want to certify as a hub or women owned business or with the SBA, they're coming for you. They want personal financial statements, personal tax returns, oh, yeah. um, your website, up, video, branding. They want to see that you have the strength and the muscles to have the capacity to do the work so that when they throw you in as either a subcontractor or a prime, you can scale, you can collaborate. And a lot of people are thinking, well, 
I can't hire your people. Let me tell you a secret that a lot of people don't know. There are a lot of, in every state, there are unemployment agencies. And they, a lot of them have programs where they're trying to match people who are uh, underrepresented in the workspace. So mm-hmm. it's people that have handicaps or disabilities. There is funding, Angel, where you can go to your local employment office and craft a job description. They will find you someone that will match that job description who's disabled or someone that has some uh, disability, but they're very capable and they have funding to pay you to pay the salary for you. So it's an exchange of you giving them the experience. They will pay the salary and it's sometimes they're earmarked for like six weeks. Sometimes they're two months. Sometimes they have programs for an adult versus um, and uh, un- mostly historically unemployable teens. But what you right. get is someone to come in, do your branding, help you with sales, help you with hands and boots on the ground that you have a government agency funding. Right. Mm-hmm. So you've got to be in the know. Uh, There's other sources of resources other than the bank or your mom or your savings or pulling down from your 401k. And as you get in with the local chamber of commerce, your church, uh, United Way and all of these organizations, information is there for the for for you to benefit you. And you'd be surprised. You'd be so pleasantly surprised if there's so many um grants and different programs in place to help entrepreneurs, but you've got to be in the building to know where they are, how to deploy them. And then when they're ready to give you the funds, have the infrastructure in place to show how well you manage those funds so that they give you more. You can get multi-year funding on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's very true. And I know one of my clients that I work with, they got a PPP P loan and they had to send in a ton of documents, you know, and I I assisted them in doing this, but they had to send in a ton of documents um, to their bank. And I don't know if those are going to ever be looked at, but they, I mean, it was at least a hundred pages worth of documents of different sorts of expenses, um, proof of checks, all kinds of things. So definitely, definitely, definitely. And I Mm -hmm. think a lot of us missed some of those funding opportunities this year because we didn't have those structures. No paper trail. Right. And again, it was free money, right? You had to go through the construct of that. But once you got through that 100 page document, you then found a a one pager to get it totally forgiven. So it was basically Mm -hmm. free money. And there's so many communities and so many businesses that couldn't partake of that, not because they weren't viable, not because they didn't suffer a loss. They just couldn't prove it. They couldn't right. show it. Yeah. That is absolutely spot on for sure. And we do have a session here um, in the in the business and wellness series where we spoke to Johan Mansili, who is a CPA, and he talked a mm-hmm. little bit about how to get forgiveness for those mm-hmm. loans and how you can remain compliant with them. Mm-hmm. He also is going to be coming back later in the new year to go through the forgiveness application. Awesome, for those awesome. so, and I'm glad um, you brought that up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because just like the medical profession, there are different specialties within the CPA. So I'm a certified public yeah. account for over 30 years. My specialty is systems, process improvement, holistic business advisory, also helping people on the people facing side, right? right? Because what I'm seeing people implode is not knowing how to do the thing, but knowing how to do it well over time and that's where coaching comes in. So I bring to level uh, my accounting background, management, software sales, all that to the table to say, let's bring together an ecosystem for your business so you can thrive and survive. And it all starts with you making better choices so you don't begin not having the end in mind and you don't have a business that's not self uh, cash liquid, And a lot of people are living off loans, right? It's unfortunate, Mm -hmm. living off lines of credit. And when cash liquidity got really tight, guess who were the first ones to get cut, you know? So Mm -hmm. it's very important to just leverage all types of professionals and make sure that they're in a genre that meets the need that you're needing them to engage with you. Absolutely. And that is that is such spot on advice. And so I did see we had some questions. Oh, cool. So... 
Um, so first question was regarding um, number two, finding your tribe. And someone says, do you recommend a sequence to find your tribe? That's a good question. So here's the sequence. The number one thing you want to first get is your banker. The number one thing is because a lot of people start off with the, with the era of mixing personal and business finance transactions, right? And then if you have a bank account that's co-mingled with some personal stuff and business stuff, right? And then it's time to now pull out and bifurcate the business from the personal portion. You actually have to go back through that yourself. So the first thing you want to get a bank account and a banker that knows you, not just the account, not just, you know, just have the, the, the construct of the financial tool that holds your transactions. But you walk into a lobby, you introduce yourself, the business you're creating, and you open that account with a person. Yes, you can do it online, but doing that allows them to have incentive into you because that banker is getting brownie points for new customers, growing that account, growing the relationship. So it's a win-win situation. So first the banker, then the accountant. So after you have it in the bank, you have someone keeping those books and records for you. And mm -hmm. with tools like uh, QuickBooks Online, Zero. There's a way you can either get the accountant to set it up for you, you maintain it, and then as you make errors or have questions, they can reach out online and fix that for you. Or you just want to be hands off and let them do it. So there's many ways we can make that work for your budget and your time. Okay. Then the next thing you want to get is someone to help you with sales. Because as you now have the account, we got to put some money in there. And there's so many people that know how to make the most beautiful cake, but nobody knows. So you've yeah. got to have someone front office branding, making the case for that, right? Now, once you start selling stuff, you got to have insurance because just how life goes, someone's going to bite into something. They're going to say you made them sick or their hair turned blue and you or whatever, right? You didn't mm -hmm. do their wedding photos. And having that person there that has the insurance, you've got the risk management where you've got your general liability. You've got your errors and omissions. You don't you, you can't engage that in some some contracts with the government won't even do business with you unless you have your insurance. Right. OK. Then an attorney. So when stuff goes wrong, even though you have coverage, people can still sue you even just because they just want mm -hmm. to. <laughs> right. And then last but not least, a coach, because I will tell you, a coach like myself cannot coach you on a structure that doesn't exist. Mm hmm. Right. So you get together the construct of what business in a very tactful uh, framework. So you have guardrails so that when you come to a coach, you say, you know, here's who I am and here's where I'm stuck. Right. And you're not spending time. Oh, get your accounting records and come back to me. Oh, well, you know, you know, you need insurance. Get that together and come back. So you want to start off with the banker, the accountant, uh, the salesperson, then the insurance, the attorney, and then put the ice in the cake with the coach. And I think that sequence will work well for you. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. So the next question is, what types of moves do I need to make to make sure my goals are met before I transition from my business to retirement? Ah, excellent question. Beginning with the end in mind. So the thing is, is to identify what your gaps are. So the gap is where you want to be as compared to where you are. So in terms of your lifestyle and the and how you like to live your life, the, the way you like to go on vacation and move, because we can't do that now. But a lot of people really run out of money before they run out of life. So you need to think about, look at your tax return and use it as a proxy or a baseline for saying, okay, here's the amount of money that I've made. And of course, the tax return should represent income from all sources, right? Your rental property on your Schedule E or your W-2 income, your 1099. All boats come to shore on that document. Let that be a way that you can use to say, okay, let's look at the last three years tax returns and see the changes. Is, is income going up? Is it going down? Did you sell a house? Did you move somewhere? Is someone in college and you're getting college tuition, um, you know, credits. Look at those changes and then look at the next three to five years and say, what can I put in place to have enough liquidity to cover what I want to see happen in the future? And a lot of people just see the tax return as a way just to 
you know, calculate up what you owe Uncle Sam and get your refund back. Yeah. And it, you know, that could be a way. But you really wanted to be in a position where it's used as a tool to plan and do tax planning. And there's a lot of financial planners which will use your tax return as a stepping stone to say, OK, here's what you've been able to do in the past. Of course, your performance in the past is a good prerequisite of what you may can expect in the future. It's not the predictor, but it uh -huh. is actually sort of a, a proxy of what's possible. And then see what you're willing to pivot and change. Maybe you need to move to a different region. Maybe you need to close down um, selling sandwiches and focus just on coffees that people can whatever. Uh -huh. But you got to figure out how to make yourself relevant and useful in a way that leverages your passions, right? Not just, okay, I have money. I hear it's cool to, you know, have a gas station. So I think I'll, you know, unless you know how to run the pumps, run the registers, never invest in a company that you can't run yourself. Yeah. Because I promise you something always happens where they call in the business owners. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you gotta be yeah. hands on, yes. Yeah, you wanna know every single element. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing I think of starting something from the brown, ground up is that you know every single element of how your business is, operates because you've worked it. Mm -hmm. So even as you're bringing on new people, you understand the system of it yeah. very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was a great question, Lillian. Now let's see. Mm, excuse me. We have from Resource Channel. When starting out, when do you decide to shift from providing free services to paid services? I am offering free services for now to get testimonials. Okay. So as we said, we have to make sure that we value ourselves because it's very hard to ask someone to monetize something that they used to get free last month or, or last week, right? Because the mindset... Uh, when people pay, they pay attention. So you're going to make that transition is when you want to go to the next level because you have to be able to show a cash flow transaction that your business is viable. Uh, when you want a bank loan, the, the thing that they want you to do is maintain a certain cash level in your account that can pay back and service the debt. They call that debt service. But they know you also have to pay rent, you have to pay payroll. So there are some institution that say, okay, keep a minimum of 10,000 or 5,000 in your account. And that would be the prerequisite for us to loan you the money. So if you continue to give your services away free, how you, how will you be able to amass that liquidity? You can borrow from relatives, right? That's what people do. You can invest your own money. You know, it's a common question on Shark Tank. How much of your own money have you put in? You can do that, but that's not sustainable. So Here's what I do. I never give away anything free unless there's a, an exchange of value, right? Like money isn't the only currency. There's currency of emails and access and experience and trial and error and your, your, your PowerPoint blows up and you're figuring out what to say and do when it goes. All that stuff is, is currency that helps you be a better you. So always, if you're going to give something that's not uh supported by financial exchange see what you can get that's going to allow you to push your um business forward it's either going to be access for instance would i charge oprah would i charge oprah to um you know to, you know to to do uh a, a, an assessment or a coaching no because if i can say this assessment was taken by Oprah. She loved it and she can speak about it on her show and, and a mastermind or whatever. That's currency. That's influence, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to ask yourself, what is it I can get from this person? And if a person has nothing to exchange, then they have to exchange money. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we get tripped up. It's a, it's, a, it's a person we do life with. It's a relative. It's a friend. It's someone we know from school. And we say, oh, I'll just give it to you free. But they have nothing to give you but just a thank you. That's the, the criteria. You can continue to give free because getting other things in exchange. But when that person can't give you something back, you have to require cash. Yeah. So it looks like the person is saying they're doing that um, for a free testimony or for testimonials in exchange. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So that's great, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, um, I, I, what I'm understanding, I think what the person meant by that question is that they're using the free services as a way to maybe get their name out there 
mm-hmm. get the testimonials and things like that. Now, this is yeah. what I, I want to also weigh in on this question yeah, too, because yeah. I, I understand when you're first starting a business and you're trying to drum up that momentum and mm-hmm. you're trying to figure out, well, how do I start getting people in? I'm assuming you provide, you provide a service. Mm-hmm. So, um, one of the things to think about, and this is something to be honest with you, I didn't really start thinking about my business until this year, is that when you run a business, you're essentially a salesperson. And a lot of people feel icky about sales and like, Ugh, I don't like asking people to buy things and I don't like asking people for money, things like that. But you have to recognize if you're running a business, like to Chandra's point, it has to be an entity that makes money. In order for us to make money, you're a salesperson. So the the mindset shift you have to make that I know I personally have had to make so I can relate to this is that you have to tell yourself when someone asks you, you know, what do you do? You have in your mind, your spiel that you give Mm -hmm. them, right? But in your mind, you have to understand I am a salesperson. So the way that you're structuring your time, the way you're structuring your day is I am focusing on bringing on clients that Mm -hmm. are going to pay me for my services. Now, I think what takes people a lot away from that is that Mm -hmm. they think marketing and sales are the same thing. So we spend a lot of time, and again, I've done this. So we spend a lot of time on our social media following and let me try to get more followers on social media. Let me try to, um, in in general, just build up and brand awareness that marketing is the strategy strategy you're using to get the person to you. Sales is the relationship you have with them to convert them. Like the actual relationship that's going to result in the money happening. So when you're first starting a business, you really need to focus on selling. Right. And I I, I didn't know this because when I started my business, I focused a lot on marketing and I gave things away for free. And I'm not saying that was Mm -hmm. a terrible thing, but it it was hard to start to make that transition to say, okay, now I'm going to be charging for things. So Mm -hmm. I needed to understand. I didn't understand that then that really my primary point is to sell people. So Mm -hmm. it's to create relationships with people where I'm explaining to them what my services are. I'm creating a relationship with people that will want to buy from me and then I'm providing the service. So I say all that in relation to the free services. I think you're thinking of it as this will be a way for me to get more people to buy from me later. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. If your goal is to sell, which is different from marketing, which is just building up your brand awareness, awareness to eventually right. convert this person. Mm-hmm. If your focus is to sell, then you need leads. You need some sort of mechanism that is yes. going to bring more people to you. So then you're having conversations with them yeah. about them buying your yeah. service. And it's good to establish that trade-off up front, mm-hmm. Angel. And I think that's what is so good about having a branding coach because yes. you have to begin with the end in mind. If you want to give away something free, which, by the way, is one of the most amazing ways um, to get people to be aware of the benefits of mm-hmm. what you have to offer, you want to start with the uh, managing expectations, letting people say, right. you know what, this is a limited time offer. I'm only doing this for the month of January. I want to yeah. know new year, new you. I need to hear your results. Can you share that on social media? Can you put that on Facebook? Can you put that on LinkedIn and and, and message me? So yeah. it's got to be starting off. The intention is I'm sharing this with you. Mm-hmm. Here's just the something value I want, I want to receive. And ret- exactly. And a lot of times we just say, here, try this and let me know without yeah, any, but here's you know, the thing tethering. Also, yeah. Mm-hmm. Giving away something for free is an excellent strategy as a lead generator to get more exactly. people to you. But you have to think about what it is you give for free. Ideally, what you're giving for free is not going to be the same service that someone would pay you for. You give away something that is um, of lesser value, but mm-hmm. would maybe prime that person to want to purchase from you. So exactly. what a lot of, for example, let's say you, um, let me think of something. So let's say you ran an ad. You said, I'm going to spend $100 on an ad. The ad is running to a free presentation on YouTube of pre video that you put together, mm-hmm. sharing some information around the service that you provide. And then mm-hmm. you're utilizing that video at the end of that video, you're saying to people, and if you're interested in getting support and, le- and learning this or doing this, set up a call with me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When they set up the call with you, you're selling them. Exactly. So then you're getting your free thing. 
you can try to, you can use that as a way to get testimonials because they can give you mm -hmm. testimonials for the free thing. And then you're also generating them, generating possible leads for people to be potential clients of yours. So you're not just giving away stuff. Like it, right. everything is to Shonda's it's point. A strategy. Mm -hmm. It's strategic. It's exactly. strategic about it. So when you see people give away freebies or do free classes or free webinars, yeah. there's always a strategy. Yeah. Especially if and, they're doing it for the purpose of selling to you. There's yeah. a strategy they're using it. To yeah, give it. And, ha mm -hmm. and have a budget. In other words, if you're going to do it free, say, okay, I'm going to give away $300 or $500 or three months. Have some sort of guardrails around that so that you just don't get caught up in the whim of doing it in, a, in an activity with no yeah. you know, return on investment. Everything so, has yeah. to be mm -hmm. financially sustained. Exactly. So exactly. if you spend $100, you're, you're sending that, you're, you're creating, and what I essentially just explained is a funnel. Mm -hmm. So you exactly. use the ad, that was their first point of contact with you. They clicked on it. They decide to sign up for the free class. They watch the free class. You encourage them to set up a call. A small percentage of those people are going to set up the call. A smaller percentage of those people are going to buy. So then right. that ad sustains itself, right? Because at least, mm -hmm. I don't know how much your product is or your service is, but let's say your service is $100. All you need is one person to substantiate exactly. that. Exactly. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's the mm -hmm. way you kind of have to think about giving away free stuff. Right. Yeah. It, and then you add value to the experience such that they say, you know what? Angel did this. She showed me a great way to brand myself on three different social medias. It was such an amazing thing. I'm going to hire her. So you give it right. away free. You give it, but you add value. You're giving so credibility, mm -hmm. trust. You're showing, because I know <laughs> when you provide a service, a lot of times people are not going to buy if they don't know you. So they need to have some sort of touch point with you mm -hmm. before they get to the point where they're spending with you. But like video, audio, those are great ways for that person to have that touch point with you. And mm -hmm. then you're ready to start selling them. They're warmed yeah. up and they may be ready to Chandra's point to buy. Yeah. So yeah. you're thinking about that more strategically with the free. You're not off base by giving away free stuff. Oh, but absolutely you have to not. Like really think about and also how can you scale because if you have a video you mm -hmm. can show that to a bunch of people if you're actually giving away for free your time then of course you're a lot more limited in how much time you have and then they may if that's not converting into a sale right. then you're not even making any money from it yeah and I, i'm glad you said that because so many entrepreneurs don't value their time they don't mm -hmm. think about okay i i, I did this service and it cost this, I bought this thing and I did this, but you don't think about the time of your labor, right? And if you, so you'll notice on Shark Tank, they ask you, are you paying yourself? Because that's the last thing you want to do because the proof of concept is if you don't do labor, because of course you want to pay yourself a million dollars, right? So without that um, element in there, how much does it really cost to run this business? But right. that, that's not sustainable, right? You can't not pay yourself. And we've seen many mm -hmm. deals when they say, you know what? I love your concept. I don't like you. I'll pay you, <laughs> you know? So yeah. keep in mind, you've got to figure out a way how to be multi-dimensional uh, in your income sources. There's nothing wrong with having this passion and still working your nine to five job or, you know, doing a part-time, you know, Uber delivery mm -hmm. or whatever it is to just bring cash flow in. Maybe go to your grandmother and say, you know what, can I run this house that's empty? I can make it a rental property and give you a cut, grandmother. I mean, real estate is great. And a lot of people don't realize there are a lot of people in their family that would love your help to help them monetize, run, and put up structure around some empty property that they have that you didn't even know you didn't ask. But you've got to figure out a way to not cut the strings of a W-2 income so fast that you want to do this thing. You want to make sure that yeah. you have this overlap of doing the, you know, the stuff during the day. But even Clark Kent, superhero, he still worked mm -hmm. at the... At the he still worked in the newspaper by day, but at night he was a superhero. So there are right. a lot of people who quit their jobs too fast. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, keep that job as long as you can. Build up a nest egg such that you have enough to make mistakes, to invest in your business. But you never want to have to worry about food or, or rent. You want to make sure you've got some cushion there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, Lily asks, what's the difference between an accountant and CPA and how do I determine which one I need? Great, great question. So a CPA is a certified public accountant and it's someone that has been 
tested through the state because it's a state licensing that you have passed a, uh, a, a test. It's normally four to five days long. It's very grueling. You also have an educational requirement and an experience requirement as well as a an education. So a certified public accountant is someone who is licensed like a medical holder, an attorney, where you're licensed through a state agency. And there are certain protocols that I have to maintain to comply with state law, as well as comply with the ethics standards of my profession. So that I have a higher level of, of compliance than uh, someone that's an accountant. An accountant is someone that just has an accounting degree, but they haven't passed the test. They're just as capable. There are some great bookkeepers and accountants that do amazing work, right? And they just need to pass the test. So it's the difference between the uh, level of uh, autonomy you have, because with the CPA, you can actually hold them accountable through the state agency. You can go online and see how long they've had their um, their CPA. Have there been any infractions? Have they had any ethical violations? It's all public knowledge. You go on that website and it will show you their name, how long they've been in business, and it's very transparent. On the other hand, you're just trusting that bookkeeper or that accountant, but there's no regulatory oversight, right? And there are many, I know many accounts that are very skilled and talented and they just have yes to pass that exam, but that's the difference. One is they've gone through the the rudiment of doing the exam, getting all that in place, and the others have a skill set. And right. they now have a new uh, criteria that the word accountant can only be used by a CPA. If you are not certified, you can You're call yourself a bookkeeper. Yeah. And so they fought, uh, the uh, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants sought for that distinction because they want people in the public to know the, the level of quality and care that we go through to maintain that standard. Every single year, I have to maintain so many hours of continuing education. Oh, wow. I've done that for 32 years straight. So wow. <laughs> It's very difficult. So just it's just all about what you know. There's nothing wrong with an accountant doing your books, right? But they can't mm -hmm. give you a review. They can't give you audit financial statements. They can't give you um, sort of some of the, the support that's needed for third-party documents like the bank. They require you to get a CPA to do that. So a lot of people have their regular books done by an accountant and then take mm -hmm. you to a CPA to get those certification okay. letters and reviews. So that, and that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. And then also, um, this wasn't talked about, but I know if you want to do things like purchase a home or even if you're an entrepreneur and like say you're full time entrepreneurship certified public accounts, I know can provide like to your point, those letters that's, mm -hmm. that verify your income for, mm -hmm. you know, apartments, for homes, whatever it may be. So, yeah, yeah. A lot of times they will require someone of a licensing and the reason they require that because if they don't represent it, they can go against the licensing board to come against that person. So it's just another checks and balances, if you will. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so Resource Channel says, thanks, Angel and Chandra, for the clarification about value. That's why I meant that's what I what I meant by shifting from providing free to paid services. Mm. Wonderful. Okay, I'm glad we were able to get around. I know we like talked about it for a minute because that was like a, a yeah. good. <laughs> but that's a good. It's, it's it's such a it's on point because so many people do that. They just do it too long, yeah. or mm -hmm. they do it to the wrong person. You want to give something to someone that it. has that gives you something back. Yeah. Yes. 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 And there's so many ways. I mean. Um, research channel, if you want to talk offline, I mean, and it may be also good for you to even schedule a session with me because we can talk about a lot of different things you can do. Because I'm assuming, mm -hmm. again, you're using that as a lead generator, you're trying to bring mm -hmm. in more people. There's a lot of different ways to give free value yeah. that don't mm -hmm. harm your, your, the value of your products or your prices mm -hmm. that yeah. will generate those leads for you without, you know, harming kind of your value. Because to Shonda's point, if you're giving away something mm -hmm. for free, and then when a pace have someone pay for that same thing, you know, it's going to be hard. Yeah. To get yeah. That. And that's one thing we uh, in the leadership coaching, the assessment really reveals things about you that you may be unaware of. Uh, a lot of people don't know the power of you asking yourself questions because the way the brain functions, you get up in the morning. What time is it? Where am I? What I want to eat for breakfast? That's yeah. how you really do change. There are a lot of people that give away free things because it's not about the business. It's about something that happened in the past 
and they made it mean Ooh. something, yeah. right? Something that was triggered on the playground, something that happened uh, with a professor. And they said, you know, um, are you sure you wrote this paper on your own? Uh, you didn't mm -hmm. have, you know, and it stuck in your mind because they said it in front of 30 people and yeah. you made it mean something. So a right. lot of times there are actions we do based on like uh, triggers from the past. And what mm -hmm. the, the process we go through, the pedagogy of this amazing science is allows you to walk through and reconstruct why you're doing something, to make you mm -hmm. aware of it. Because a lot of times you don't know you have spinach in your teeth, you don't know your slip is hanging, and you're totally unaware that given the pressure, you say, you know what, you don't have to pay me, just here. Where, where really is that coming from? Yeah. And I can tell you that our relationship with money mostly time stems out of our relationship with ourselves and how we were first introduced with comfort and commerce and how your parents budgeted and they said money doesn't grow on trees and this and that and you don't need those shoes or you're getting the best or all these mixed messages and we made it mean something and it shows up in our business and we are totally unaware of it. So mm -hmm. what we do, first of all, is walk you through that, but more importantly saying, this is not who you are. It's just where you are. Let's use this as a way to walk through that. And people are certainly set free, like, okay, so this is why I do this, totally unaware. Now they have a blueprint to get from point A to B and fill that gap. So you're right. Uh, just these little tweaks make such a big difference. Absolutely. So I know we're almost getting on the eight o'clock hour. So we we feel this two hours went by okay. so fast, you guys. <laughs> Yes, 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 yes. So I'm going to let Lillian's question be the last one and then we'll give, um, we will recap kind of what we talked about and talk about what's going to be coming up as well. So Lillian's question is, where do I find case studies? Okay, good study. Good question. So it's two or three sources. One is an estate association. So if there's an industry specific thing, let's say if you wanted to find out some more information about insurance, because one of those things that you always have to have where there's a money flow is insurance. So you would go to the insurance association. There's associations of people that are licensed. Like I have the Texas Society of CPAs, right? So the state licenses me, but my association, my society, I can get research. I can get library books and materials. Mm -hmm. So go to the associations within that industry. And nine times out of 10, they have a public website where you can get free information. Another case study is just to Google it. If you just, just Google case studies for a gas station, case studies for a bakery, and you will come up with that. Uh, and the final place is universities. There are a lot of people that are getting their PhDs and they do research in certain, uh, that are getting business related or a leadership mm -hmm. or entrepreneurial. They actually have to do their thesis or their background study and they have to show Here's my, you know, my thesis. Here's how I proved it out. Here's how I did my research. And then they present it for a panel and then they're awarded their doctoral. That research is searchable. You got to go to the university, see if it was done either with, um, in conjunction with like a governmental agency. But most people that have PhDs, it would be thrilled to share their research because yeah. every time it's shared and used again, it sort of adds credibility to that. So industry rise, mm -hmm. look at some associations, Google it on all these search. You can YouTube, you know, the world. And then look at our, your local colleges and universities, a great place to start. And then of course the US government, your tax dollars play for a plethora of data. Go to the library and every book in there, your tax dollars have paid for, check one out. Absolutely. I love the library. So if you guys follow me on, on Instagram, she is Angel Mills. Well, you see both of our Instagrams at the bottom. So if you want to follow us, please do. Please do. I'm mm -hmm. always talking about books. I, I got like a stack of at least 15 books I just took out from the library. So, and I know, I don't know what they're doing in Texas, but I know in, in Metro Atlanta to get the, all you have to do is like go to your online portal, request the books you want. And when they come in, you can go to the library branch, give them a call and they bring the books right to your car. 
Oh, yeah. So yeah. It's curbside service now. You don't have wow. to do pull up and get your books, request them online, and they'll get them from, you know, whatever you can select, what branch you want to pick them up from. So yeah. I love the library. I'm always getting books and things about business, books, fiction books, just, just good stuff. I love to read. So definitely using the library. Also know that JSTOR, J-S-T-O-R.org, they, uh -huh. I believe, have, that's often what people who are doing, um, master study or PhD mm -hmm. study, they often use that to get online articles. Mm, okay. I do believe they have a free subscription for several months. I can't remember how long it is, but it's, it's pretty long. So mm -hmm. you can definitely get research articles there. And there's probably some, some case studies in there too. I know there's a lot of Harvard business school stuff. Oh, on that they, they pretty much have everything. So they're a really good place as well. And awesome. So thank you so much, you all, for asking so many wonderful questions. Yeah, those are really good. That's really yes. good. Let me just thank you so much, Angel, for mm -hmm. having me. This has been amazing. I was, I don't know if you know how we came together, but Afua recommended me to you. She's out of uh, London. And she oh. said, I want you to meet this amazing person. And I look at Instagram, I'm like, yeah, yeah this is someone in my tribe. So I've been so um, looking forward to this because anytime you can engage with other people who bring light and love and mm -hmm. uh, sort of creative entrepreneurship, it's, it's always someone I want to collaborate with. So thank you so much for having me. I just want to yeah. finally say um, to all the listeners, just don't don't shrink back. There's a lot going on and some there's a part of you that wants to you know, wait in fear, but don't, you know, mm -hmm. this is a great time to start a business because let me tell you, there's so much grace, so mm -hmm. much unknown, so much uncertainty. If you miss so something, many people wouldn't even notice it. <laughs> so many, many problems. problems. Yeah. Just roll up your sleeves, figure out who you need to connect with, get the information and go for it, fail forward, get up and do it again. And if it's a part of what is a part of what you were destined to do and a part of your skill set, you'll get it right. Just keep trying until you see yourself, uh, you know, impacting yeah. in a way that it's, it's, it shocks you. And then mm -hmm. you know you're on the right path. So just keep going. Don't shrink back. And if you need help, we're here. Angel can help you get your brand out. I can help you make great choices. And together as a community, we're going to make it through. America 2.1, you ain't seen nothing yet. We're going right. to make this happen. We we're have no place happen. else to go but up. 21 is here. Exactly. So um, I also want to let everyone know, I know if you watched from the beginning, I talked about the She Live Club and I had I was able to put the information in the description box. So the She Live Club is basically a text messaging community where I'll be texting you each time I am live whether it be on YouTube, Clubhouse, or Instagram. So when I'm live either by myself or with wonderful guest like Chandra, I will be Thank sending you a personalized text with the link so that you're able to join. Because I know a lot of times I'm on di different platforms. It's hard for everyone to keep up with what the discussions are each week. So um, hopefully, I know Chandra, I'm going to talk to her once we end the live about possibly joining. She is new to Clubhouse. I don't know. Did you set up your account on Clubhouse? I did. I did. I did. I'm Thank waiting for you to tell me all the juiciness of it. So we yes, can going. talk to her about it. But for those those who are unfamiliar, Clubhouse is an excellent app for people who want to just build relationships with others online based around their different interests. So the the app is essentially just several conversations happening at once on different topics. It's a completely audio app. So you're able to join in. Once you join, you follow people. They can invite you to different types of discussions that are happening I'll be hosting several discussions over there and you're able to listen in. And then also sometimes there's Q and a style. So you can come up and ask questions. A lot of great folks are on there. People that you probably look up to admire on there sharing wonderful Ooh. gems. So I've definitely encouraged people to get on the app. I do right now have, it is an invitation only app and I do mm. have three invitations right now. So if you join the she live club, which all the information is in the description box below. If you go ahead and text she live to the number below, um, I'm going to be doing tomorrow a little giveaway for anyone who wants to join. So I'll be giving oh, away those cool. three invitations so you can get on the platform. Well, thanks for getting me in there. I appreciate yes. that. <laughs> we got Chandra in here. So we're also, uh, I'm going to talk to Chandra about doing a follow-up conversation about this for the clubhouse folks. 
Okay. And um, so we can kind of go through these seven and then do more Q&A about it and kind of break down what each of these elements are. So stay mm -hmm. tuned for a day. Absolutely. There's going to be more to talk about as everything rolls yes. out in January. We'll have, we'll have yeah. Time. And then we don't have to be on video so we can look like whatever, you know, <laughs> no one can see you. So you just, people just hear your voice. So whatever you want to do. Come in your funny slippers. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, so we'll be we'll be doing a lot of stuff over there, you guys. And um, I'll also be here tomorrow. And if you're part of the She Live Club, you will get a text message for this. It's, tomorrow and Tuesday will be my last time doing the Build Your Brand from Scratch Masterclass. Mm. I've been doing that class for about the past six weeks, about twice a week. And a lot of, some of you may have joined last week or some, one of the other previous classes. So if you were able to join that, um, you know that it's a really good class. And of course, I talk about the Build Your Brand from Scratch boot camp there. Mm -hmm. And I give you an opportunity if you're interested to join that boot camp. So I definitely want to encourage you to sign up for the class. All you need to do to do that is go ahead and join the She Live um, club. And I will go ahead and send you a text when we go live tomorrow. We'll be going live here on YouTube at 7 p.m. Eastern, Monday and Tuesday. It'll be the same class both days. So you can pick which one you want to join. And we'll Excellent. also be on Clubhouse with it. So if you want to tune in and you want a reminder, I'll send you a text. And then remember, there are no replays for that. So you have to mm. join us live to be live. able to see it. Absolutely. Yeah. So also, Chandra, um, I have her information below to book her coaching call, um, a coaching session with her. And yeah. Chandra, if you want to share a little bit more, uh, again, just a little bit of recap of what that session is going to entail. And again, the links are just right here for folks who want to book. Yeah. So yes, and thank you so much. It's it's so important that people know that there are resources. You have allies in your corner. You have to have people that can help you uh, make sense of all that's going on now and what you want to see happen. So the Fresh Start Prime is just that. You want to just take a fresh start, get a fresh look, and put something that will be cohesive so that you whatever you apply to can take hold, just like you put primer on the paint before you actually put the color. This is a coaching session that's gonna be three elements. You're gonna take the full axiogenics assessment. This takes about 20 minutes, but it measures 36 attributes of value, 18 of which are internal of how you see yourself, and 18 of which of how you see your world. And again, it's no right or wrong, it's just an awareness, because as long as it serves you, then there's something you want to keep. But if you, one of the attributes, for example, is nurturing mm -hmm. others. And so if you're a nurse and you score lower on nurturing others, is there alignment between how you're showing up and the vocation yeah. that you have? And it could be a blind spot for you. So you're going to mm -hmm. get this assessment, right? The second thing you're going to get is a full report. And this is a very deep, it's 10 pages of introducing the science introducing your two most troublesome ways of thinking and how they kind of trip you up, but you're also your one superpower, right? And the reason there's a two to one, because most times what we find is people send, stay in the negative zone more than they are positive self-talk. And mm -hmm. we want them to be aware of that, as well as a goal setting framework that says, okay, these are the two hindrances you have. Here's what you want to create. What goal do you want to put in place to move the needle to get you there? You're going to get right. that. And then you're going to get a one hour coaching session where I'm going to bring together your report with this assessment and then with a series of questions that you answer as you're making your appointment. This is normally almost a two, a $300 value. But because I see the need, this is something that I've decided to do after our talk because when you see so much happening, you want to see what you can do to kind of help bridge the gap between people needing a service and having the resources for the service. So mm -hmm. you can see that this gives you access to this information such that when you have this foundation, this primer, you have a way to step forward. And then you can start layering on the cake, right? Building right. your brand and finding your tribe and getting those case studies and doing the things. And then if you want to go deeper, you can come back, but you will definitely leave that experience with something that you can build on for less than a hundred bucks. So it's really a great opportunity. And it's my joy to offer that with you. And I'm excited 
to be here with Angel. And I'm going to tell you what she does takes a lot of energy to put out content and to put out opportunities for you to grow. So I just want to thank you, Angel, for what you do, because this is thank no you. minor feat uh, to put up the ideas, to think of yeah. the guests, to schedule it, right? And she's doing it all for people that you don't see. They're just a, you know, a name and an at sign, but you're giving back value. So, you know, there's this whole saying that givers gain. And so mm -hmm. everything that you're putting out in the world because of the powerful energy that you're creating will come back to you. So thank you so much what you're creating. And I'm, I'm glad to be on this journey with you to see what we get to create together as well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for tuning in tonight. And for those on the replay, thank you so much for joining. And you have all the links in the description for Chandra's um, session that she has mm -hmm. so graciously and offered to us. And the QR use, code too. <laughs> you can use that link below and the QR code. So I'll send all that out in an email as well. So if Chandra if you want to just shoot me over that slide after mm -hmm. we'll talk about it after we we end the okay. live but um Absolutely. i'll go ahead and I'll, i will send a follow-up email to everyone who has signed up and registered through traditional means and then also send it out to um the folks who joined us via text sounds good okay so Thanks thank you all me. so much and for those who will be joining tomorrow i will see you tomorrow at 7 p.m for the build your brand from scratch Masterclass. Okay, you all have a good rest of your Sunday and I'll see you tomorrow.